and welcome to the third session in our online event series, Christmas Made Easy. My name is Jessica Doyle. I'm the Telegraph's Interiors Editor. And tonight we will be learning how to make the ultimate Christmas wreath. Um, we'll be led by wonderful florist, Willow Crossley. Um, now, hopefully you've managed to get some materials together so that you can make the wreath along with us at home. I will be making mine here. Right, so Willow Crossley, I'm sure many of you know her. She's a really got a really beautiful style, very sort of romantic, focusing on natural materials. She's written several books about floral styling and living with natural materials. Her latest wild journal is out now. And of course, there is her website, willowcrossley.com, where you can find lots more inspiration. So we're just going to go over to Willow at home now. Hello, Willow. Hi, good evening, Jim. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Um, now, I thought before we get started, would you mind talking us through what you have there in front of you, the materials that you'll be using this evening to make your wreath? Of course. Of course. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Happy Christmas, I'm not allowed to say that yet. Um, so I have got, I've got my wreath face. Um, if you, I use kind of a mix of different wreath faces. I've got this one here I um, made a couple of weeks ago, which is kind of willow picked in a garden. Um, but if you can't get either of these as well, you, you can kind of make your own using uh, things like coat hangers. Um, so anything you can really use as long as it, you just want it to be really sturdy. So today I'm going to be using my metal base. Um, and then I have got lots of moss. This is sphagnum moss kind of probably four really big, good handfuls. I have got lots of foliage. I've got um, wax flower. I've got eucalyptus, parvifolia. I've got dried um, bracken and ferns. I've got lots of Christmas tree, which I'm going to be, we're going to be covering the moss with. Um, lots of little catkins here I picked this morning. Um, buried ivy. I just love these kind of little starbursts. I won't actually be using the leaves today, I don't think. Um, lots of larch with little fur cones on, can you see? Um, and then it's such a good year for berries, I found. And I've got all these, which have got lichen on, which is just my favorite. Um, so it's gonna be very wild, very, I think it probably mostly greens with maybe some fur cones in um, and a berry potentially. But so yeah, kind of wild and wayward. And so that's what I've got here. That sounds amazing. Um, I've, been, I've managed to get hold of some dried flowers and some fresh eucalyptus. So I've got a bit of a mix of dried and fresh. Um, so, yeah, well, should we get started? Um, so we start the started. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, if you're joining along, amazing. Um, you want to start with your base and your real wire, if you have real wire. And um, what we want to do, and get your secateurs. So what we're going to do is attach the wire to the base. And this is um, this is just kind of for security for what we're about to do. But also it could be where you hang your wreath if it's going to go on your door or wherever it's going to go. But I normally lose it. But so don't worry too much if you do. So what we're going to do is grab the handfuls of moss and squeeze it onto the wire. And we're going to aim, the aim is that we cover the whole of the ring. Okay. And we're going to, this is attached really well, and we're going to pull and wrap around. Keep going. Big handfuls and you can't really go wrong with this at this stage um, but what I would say is that you want it to all be the same width so, so don't kind of make one bit chunky and one bit skinny so try and kind of work out how balance out your moss so it's a kind of even even feel how are you all doing are you all okay yeah all good Willow. Yeah. Um, I've I've got dried moss here because I'm working um, with some dried flowers. So is that if you? I, I know we talked about this um, earlier. We mentioned you mentioned that if you're going to be working with fresh, it's it's good to use fresh moss um, because it will hydrate the the materials and keep them looking fresh. 
Totally, yeah. So the whole the reason we're using moss is because you can buy lots of um, you can use dried straw bases are quite popular as well. Mm. And I would always use moss because it holds the moisture. So when you're when we're spiking in the flowers later and the foliage, it keeps it fresher. Okay. And then you can keep hydrating the moss so it lasts for longer. Mm -hmm. But so yeah, if you're if you're making a dried one, then dried moss, which you've got, Jess, would be great. Um, or if you're working with dried again, you don't actually need moss at all. Right. You could go straight in with your dried foliage. Okay. Um, people are writing things about moss, which I can't read. Can you see? Um, someone is saying they have lots of Spanish moss that hangs from oh, Florida. Florida. Wow, we have someone joining us from Florida. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Oh, I'm in Florida. <laughs> oh, amazing. I wondered, Willow, actually, due to obviously it's it's harder to get out and buy stuff um, just at the moment. Um, where, if, if you don't have a lot of fresh materials to hand either in your garden or, or, or you know, sort of nearby, where do you start things from to make a wreath? Um, I think, well, garden centres are still open. Mm -hmm. And um, big kind of places like B and Q, they they have they often kind of sell Christmas tree and moss and things. Right. Um, so I yeah I go garden centre and make friends. With, I mean, florists will be reopening again next week. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you can make friends with a, a florist and or ask them to order it in for you, that I would that would probably be my best recommendation. I think so. Yeah, something George was saying to get it in a garden centre. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, someone's got their moss on Amazon in a huge bag and very moist. That is a great idea. I didn't, I didn't know that was an option. Thank you. That's a very easy one. Okay, so I am coming to the end. Don't panic. I mean, this looks like a kind of a complete mess, um, but don't panic at all. Unless you like it, um, yours to be very neat, then you would kind of probably wrap more wire to kind of keep it more kind of restrict it a little bit more but you can we can give it a haircut afterwards um if needs be but as long as it's like kind of secure and not falling off that's the main the main thing Great. everything from amazon support local yeah i would definitely agree with that support local if you can there's this brilliant website called flowers from the farm and you type in your postcode and it gives you lots of local growers, local suppliers, local florists. So that's a really mm, good tip. Yeah, that's a great tip. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. That's amazing. I mean, it is, doesn't it? <laughs> I love them like this. I love them now, kind of just covering them in little larch branches and with kind of lichen covered yeah. twigs. So um, I'm just going to kind of tidy up here. It is quite a messy process, moss um, wreath making. Okay, so now I've, I'm going to keep the wire okay. attached, so I'm going to pull it kind of tight. And now it's time for the Christmas tree, the okay. spruce. So I have cut these. These are kind of 15, 20 centimeters. Right. And what we want to do is take a couple in your hand you can have two you can have three again the size is totally up to you i quite want it quite bushy and quite wild so my bits are quite big but if, if you want to make it kind of more delicate you can use much smaller pieces it's totally up to you so now i'm going to lay them on top kind of horizontally and with the wire that's still attached we're going to wrap it round, much like we did with the moss. So are you just sort of wrapping around the bottom of the stems here or around the whole? Around the whole thing. And, and what you want to do is, is think about, it's very easy when we're looking down to just to cover the top. But what we want to do is kind of think about this side and inside as well. Because right. always when we hang it, you kind of realise you've missed kind of the inside bottom bit. So very much think of kind of, the whole way round if you can so pull it quite tight because we really want this christmas tree to be secure mm -hmm. i've got some um, eucalyptus would now be the time to add eucalyptus or would i add that later on 
No, much later. So now what we're doing is um, just the Christmas tree. Just, just the Christmas tree, and this forms our really good base again. I've just seen Liz. Yes, flowers from the farm is exactly what I said. Um, where can I find the list of items that people are mentioning? Just didn't when the, we had this invitation to this workshop. Wasn't there a list of all the ingredients that we were going to use that we're using? Yeah, there was. So where where you um, would have signed up to it, there was a link to um, to a list of materials that that we'd use to make the wreath. So it's all there on the um, on on the website where you. Yeah. Great. So we keep laying, and what we want to do is we want to lay on top of each other and keep going in the same direction so you've got a nice flow to it. Okay. Does that make sense? Is that kind of clear? Yeah. So they're all, yeah, they're all sort of lying in the same way. And then you're exactly. covering all of the ends of the last one. With... Yeah. And, and if you can, I mean, um, Christmas tree wise, are really, um, there are lots of people selling Christmas trees now, and often they, they're kind of chopping bits off the bottom. Okay. Um, they have off cuts. So these are brilliant, just little off cuts you want. So um, have a look for a nice, for go and befriend a Christmas tree seller. Right, that's a great tip. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Someone's got perfect sound and picture. That's very happy making, Zoe. <laughs> I'm sorry if you don't. Um, oh, and you, great. Can you use ivy to wrap around? Yes, you can use ivy, absolutely, but I would probably use the spruce now first and then the ivy will come after that. Right. So we're keeping going, pull that wire tight because this is, we want this base to be really secure. Oh, great, I'm so glad they're all, lots of you are working. So keep going, keep pulling, and keep remembering to stand back. Maybe hold it up, kind of look look where you're going, and don't don't worry about. Can you see there's kind of bits hanging at down, around left, right, and centre? Don't worry at all about that because we'll chop them out. Can you see? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Do you see? Okay. Oh, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Glad you like it. Okay, so we're keeping going, remembering all the way sides and top. Okay, keep going. Um, so yeah, and then foliage wise, um, you can, there's lots of great, I mean, the Christmas foliage is out at the moment, kind of, they're very easy to get, I, I believe. Um, I use lots of cinerae, eucalyptus, of all kind of the eucalyptus family. There's lots of different types of it. And they're kind of, the leaves are quite oily, quite wet, and they all smell quite similar, but that scent to have in even wreath or no wreath is in the house at this time of year is heaven. Um, how, how long will it, will it stay fresh? Um, the sorts of ingredients that you're using, if you wanted it to be fresh and smelling amazing for Christmas Day, how, how long would you? Would you have? Probably, I mean, for Christmas Day, we're putting these up now, obviously, so they will crisp up from then. They will crisp right. up before now. But so what I would suggest is that you maybe save a bit, put it in some water, and then you can just refresh after a couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. But if you don't, if you can't be bothered to do that, then I would maybe think of using things that are happy, are dry a bit better. So I'm doing lots at the moment, um, making lots of everlasting wreaths for people. So um, I've got one here. This is one. Can you see that? So that is all bleached ruscus. So she will, and she's on a yeah. straw base. Can you see? So is that? that one that you would hang inside rather than rather than outside, or would it be okay? I put her on my door. It's going to go on my door, um, but yes. Yeah, so I'd have a think. Lots of people love using dried hydrangeas in wreaths. I don't because for for outdoor because I find they go brown the minute they oh, get moisture. So, so I think if you're going to be having it indoors, then hydrangeas are, are the best. They're like my favourite Christmas ally. They're amazing. Um, but for the for kind of a, a 
outdoor, I would go probably parvifolia, pistachio, olive, eucalyptus. Um, what else? I've got rosemary working with a lot at the moment. Yeah. And um, did you spray it regularly with water if you're using um, all sort of fresh foliage? Yeah, ready? yeah, you can do. Um, what, but what you also can do is you can sit them in a tray of water and, and they drink up from the bottom all the moss. So the moss will then rehydrate your greenery. Um, but what you just must remember if you do that is to not um, hang it straight back on your door. Let it drain again overnight. Right, okay. Um, otherwise you might damage all your, your paint or whatever's on your door. You can buy this plastic to line the back of them. Mm -hmm. But I try not to use plastic as much as I possibly can, so I don't. But you could always kind of tuck a bit of spruce down the back if you're worried about damaging the back of your door. Right, okay. And for things like holly, um, do, does that come later on as well? All the kind of extra foliage for holly branches, yeah. something like that comes so, Yeah. So this is, so that's, that's her now. So this is like the kind of the, the basic mechanics of making a kind of very sturdy traditional green wreath. Yeah. And now comes the fun bit, the decoration. Okay, great. Um, so I am, I'm going to stop there. And is everyone all right if I carry on? Um, I, I will keep my wire attached. Keep it attached. Okay, great. So we so now, yes. So there's two ways that we can do this. The, the whole idea of having the moss is that we're, the stems will come into contact with the moisture and they'll stay fresher for longer. But what you can do... So I've got, this is eucalyptus, mm -hmm. and this is pistachio. So I'm gonna start with them. Either what you can do is take a piece and cut it on, always cut on a diagonal, just because it creates quite a good spike. Okay. Yeah. And very simply spike it in to your moss. Okay. Like that. Wow. And you can either then do that for the whole of your bit of your wreath. You can just prick them in one by one by one. Or if you're kind of if you like a kind of methodical, um, kind of more organised way of doing it, I get bored far too quickly and try starting off like this, but then I get impatient and, and move on. So what you would do with that is you would make lots of little bunches. Okay. So here. I have got four sprigs, two um, parvifolia, two eucalyptus, and I'm making them kind of just a little bouquet right. in my hand. And I'm then going to, with my attached wire, lay them again horizontally like we did with the Christmas tree and wrap it round. And what you can do is then just make, you can make kind of 20 little bunches and then all at once and then you just lay them on one by one by one yeah does that make absolutely. sense yeah the people i think we'll see how long the class is just for um, admin it's um we're here until eight o'clock so we'll be making the read and then hopefully there'll be time for a bit of uh questions at the end mm. so i am gonna kind of go around filling I'm going to start with one foliage to start with so I'm going to use the pistachio and I'll kind of cover it I'm going to add it all in the same direction for now and I'm just going to feed it in and you want it to go quite deep into the into the um, moss so that it gets its best chance of having a good drink and if you like it um, your your wreath to be very neat then you probably want smaller bits um, I made a really pretty kind of very ditzy one this week with the buried ivy, like these, um, wax flower and berries, or very, very little. I mean, it takes a very long time, um, but it's, the effect is great. And then before that, I made one with just pistachio and wax flower, very wild, kind of big bits sticking out. Um, so it's very much how you feel at this stage um it's it's such a kind of personal thing your wreath and 
I do so many workshops and all with the same ingredients, but they just all look so different at the end. It's fascinating. And, and can you be sort of quite rough and ready with the wire? Because I guess you won't, you won't, see if, if you're wrapping the wire around it, do you, do you have to worry about sort of being neat with that? Or um, is it something that won't show up at the end? No, 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 it won't show up at all, no. And you can actually, you can buy different colour okay. wires but I've got, a, I'm using a kind of dark grey one and I've, I've got, this is a green one I've got here. Um, but again, they're very easy to get hold of these wires. They're great for garland making, kind of, if, you, if you're going to be doing kind of Christmassy decorating kind of garlands and wreaths, it's a really good bit of kit to have. Um, I've got a question from, um, from, a, from a reader asking what wax flower is. Could you explain? Yes. So wax flower, this is wax flower. Ah, okay. You see it comes in all different colours. Just very sweet. Yeah, that looks really pretty. That really ethereal uh, that you can use. Yeah, exactly. And and I would say if you are going to use wax flower, I would definitely keep some back because they don't last having kind of fresh flowers obviously don't last as well as the greenery. So I always hold a bit back. So I've, I've kept that back actually from another wreath I made and I'll top her up. I'll swap her in in a couple of weeks when she's looking a bit tired. But I've got one on my door at the moment that I made probably three weeks ago and she still looks beautiful. So I'm keeping going with the pistachio. And again, important, I'm actually gonna cut my wire off now because I'm doing it one by one. And I'm going to leave a bit of a length, cut it, and then fold it in on itself. So into the middle of the wire, into the middle of the base. Would lawn moss work? Um, Lynn, I don't see why not. Uh, give it a go. I mean, it's just moisture, I guess. My lawn is just moss. That's a very good idea. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know Reese for female they are. I live in a house with a lot of boys. I've got three sons. So <laughs> everything seems to be a girl. Okay, so I'm keeping going. So cut the wire now. Um, will you be using the wire again? Will we need to... Um, if I, I probably won't, but the way to hang them at the back is... So, because I've got this copper base, it's got a, a little... I, I choose bit of wire or ribbon and just pick it right. through that lawn moss it is I lo i'd love to see all your creations with lawn moss <laughs> let me know if it works please <laughs> <laughs> oh i've got a really big bit here i'm just going to use yeah i think because this pistachio is so kind of wild and frothy that it kind of lends itself well to yeah. being bigger um, so yeah so keep holding them up Kind of because they always look so different. Actually, I'm just going to take her out because I didn't want her in there like that. I've had quite a lot of people um, remarking on the way that, that the wreaths are female, so it's a uh, she. <laughs> I think it's lovely. I can help it. <laughs> oh, Spagnum's good. Yeah, the, the yeah the whole point about the moss is that this moss really holds the water and. I, did I mention about, yeah, I did about rehydrating it, didn't I? Yes. Yeah. So, so you want to just keep going and, and it's really kind of up to you how much you do, what, what aesthetic you like. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I find that I can kind of come back, at, back to them kind of two hours later and I'm like, oh God, I need more. Um, so it kind of, I guess, depends on your mood. Yeah. At the time. So now I'm going to add in some eucalyptus, which the scent is just so delicious. And I love the silveriness of the eucalyptus. And baby blue is another type of eucalyptus, which is much smaller. The little, the little petals, leaves are much smaller. Mm -hmm. And can you get eucalyptus from a summer florist as well? You can Definitely. The eucalyptus is all year round. Um, everywhere it's very easy i think all the supermarkets sell eucalyptus now as well yeah. i saw some in sainsbury's the other day oh could you, um could we repeat a bit about rehydrating the moss i think a few people um didn't, didn't of, course, of course so this moss this moss actually i've had for a little while and it's very dry so what i will do 
is plunge it into a bucket of water or a sink and leave it for, I mean, it could be seconds, it could be, it could be days, hours, however long you want, and it will rehydrate. And then you squeeze all out the excess moisture and then start again. It's properly magic. So if you buy a, a bag of moss this year and you don't finish it all, you can come back to it next year and just rehydrate it. It's, it's magic. It's a really good trick. So keep holding them up kind of to see from a distance. Quite a good trick with um, doing it like this and any flower arranging actually is to have oh. a mirror so you, so you can see yeah. it reflected. Um, and you can see this is terrible because I'm just creating this kind of halo around the outside and I haven't put anything in the middle. So I'm now gonna start working in the middle a bit. Yes. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Um, Where do I get this yeah. pistachio? Yeah. Um, you, you can get that. I tell you what, another really good place is, um, it's in Hampshire, it's called Real Flowers. And it's it's a company run by Roseby Morton. And I, I, I'm being funny about the name because I think it's been renamed Roseby Morton Flowers. But if you Google Roseby Morton Flowers, they're very well known for their roses, but they're brilliant British growers. And it's all they'll have lots of it and they actually sell big kind of British foliage boxes that you can do all this with. Um, <laughs> I love this message. You got yours. It's like a disaster. I bet it doesn't look like a disaster, Kelly. <laughs> it's better than you think. Mine is considerably smaller than yours. You know? So um, yeah. Let's see yours. Let's have a well, look. It's, it's, I that's how it is right now because I didn't have a whole lot of um, spruce to be, to be working with. So I'm going to be bumping mine up with the um, with the dried flowers and perfect, beautiful. So um, I might show. You, so I've got mossing pins here, which are re another really good bit of right. kit, um, like this, and they're great if you if there's something that's too big that you want to attach mm -hmm. and. You kind of loop things through what have i got i can do so like i've got this kind of bit of lichen uh, not lichen large branch and i just kind of want to attach it so i will how can i show you this so i will very simply take the pin and pin it down and that's how you kind of attach things can you just see so i'll have loads of them so i'm going to attach them all with that, um, I, I just love these little branches cut and these kind of spikes yeah. coming off them. Love, love that kind of wildness. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to put those in with with my pins, and I might use a couple of pins just to get it You're really literally just sort of sticking the pins into the moss. To... I mean, yeah, I'm stabbing them in. Like can you see yeah. here so i'm going to just cover it in this i was so excited to find so many of these today i find them kind of in my travels and actually if you're looking for these i always kind of think they're going to be on the floor but they're often they've fallen from the trees really high up and they get tangled in bushes so you're actually yeah. doing a bit of cleaning <laughs> forest cleaning you're not picking them um so yeah so so now it's kind of just adding it's adding anything you like this is the bit where you um, just grab what you've got and just totally yeah um and attach with with the mossing pins or by spiking it in um and i love i'm really into it's such a good year for berries at the moment what's the pins you're using yes of course jenny here mossing pins can you see that is that showing you? Um, again, you can kind of get them in any florist sundry place or Amazon. Um, so these are buried wow. ivy and they are so, along with all the berries, is such mm -hmm. a good year for them. Um, but a lot of them are covered in this yellow pollen, which I just don't like the color of. So those ones I either just try and dust it all off or um, just snip that one off, but they're like little explosions little snowbursts so those are going to go in 
those um the stems are really floppy so those i will use another pin and i kind of just pop it down like that kind of between two stems and pin them in that way I'll do that again and when you if you've only got a few things um make try and use odd numbers all the time so if you've got kind of the large branches for example use three of them and evenly spread them but you just don't want it to look like it's too even if that makes sense it's quite a hard um balance but it's always nicer i think to have an odd number than an even number and kind of cluster them in a nice to kind of think about the position of them um, um a question asking about um when you when you dismantle the i mean we don't want to think about dismantling it just yet but um but when you do um someone say how how do you dismantle it without sort of ending up with pins and, and wires everywhere is there is there a foolproof way of doing it when you can sort of Safe material. <laughs> um, I would always pull out the big things first, and um, I guess kind of work your work your way through. Um, but yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not a joyful process <laughs> that one. So now I'm getting some of the kind of lichen covered berries and just feeding them in because they're really good strong stems, and I want to get as much as the lichen in as I can. Can you see from this far away? Yeah, a little bit closer to the screen, just step, just get a really good close on. Yeah. Right. Is that oh, clear? Yeah. Definitely a job for the boys, Emma. I couldn't yeah. agree more. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm going to actually have to come back here. It's too heavy for me. Is that better? Now you just get lots of eucalyptus. Um, I found these today as well beautiful little catkins which i swear they're not meant to be this early i i think maybe i say that every year <laughs> i'm too close to you now so these are just gonna so i'm carrying on that kind of quite wayward feel so i've got the larch i've got the little catkins oh my god it's a complete fruit salad <laughs> um oh i don't think i want any wax flour how are you all getting on you all all right? And then those catkins are kind of quite nice and light. And I rather love the, the, the lightness of that. If you're going to use kind of lots of brown bracken, I'm really drawn to the brown bracken and the larch. And I think if you can add in a lightness of kind of light catkins or straw flowers are really pretty, these. And these are dry. Um, I, I think that kind of if you mix up the light with the dark, it looks really pretty rather than. And how would chocolate. you add those um, those straw flowers? Um, yeah, I fight with these a lot. So in a dream world, you'd buy them on stalks. Um, but I bought these as heads because they were cheaper and I wanted to experiment. But what you would do with them is get some stub wire, which is kind of length of wire. But you could cut off some of this if you like. In fact, let's give it a go. So I think maybe what we might do is slight put it through the middle, although this wire is not strong. Oh you know it is. Okay. So I've just I've just, just put, put it through. It yeah and then I would twist fold it back on itself like this and then twist. And then I would cut that bit. So basically, yeah, I've made it a stem. And then I'll just post it through. So she'll just then stick in the moss. I mean, she's not going in here. She's coming out again. There she is. But that's how, that's how you would do it. And that's kind of how you do, if you want to do kind of orange slices or limes or anything that you you don't you can't really imagine how the hell you would put it attach it that's what you do you want a bit of wire look i've got these fur cones which have got the wire you just you kind of nestle the wire into the little nobbles and then mm -hmm. twist and they're attached and then you can just shove it in into the 
into it. In fact, I think they're going to go in today. You can tie them around. You can see that. Do you know what? Now I'm going to stick to my normal. I'm going to stick to my lichen and make it a bit more wild. I mean, look at that. That's like my favourite thing in the whole world. So you want it to be a bit clean. Give yourself a spike to make it go in. Can you see enough? Yeah, someone's pointing out. Um, how 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 would you hang a wreath? Um, that's that size and weight from from your door. What what are your sort of wreath hanging tips? Um, my wreath takes up always takes <laughs> up the whole door, and they fall off all the time. <laughs> um, but oh, I'm so impractical with things like this. But I I would attach it so I would probably get the the bit that I just mm -hmm. showed you at the back. In fact, I might show you now so I don't get too late for you. Um, I'm going to use a bit of wire, but you could use ribbon. You could use string. There's this brilliant, one of my favorite things in my toolkit is this. I think it's made by Oasis, which is the company as well as the Terrible Green Foam. Um, but it makes this covered wire. So it's covered in this green kind of paper stuff. It, it's properly magic. I would definitely recommend getting that just for everything. But it means you can tie up wreaths without marking. So if you're making a garland up like a staircase or something, you can do it without right. damaging the wood. So I've got this wire and I'm gonna find the copper um, thingy and feed it through some. Oh, normally I would be able to feed it through. And then that is what I will hang on to it. Okay. Can you see, so she's just fed through. And then she'll hang like that, which is quite big. That bit of eucalyptus is terrible. She's going so it's that. Um, so it's it's getting there. So it's just kind of building it up bit by bit. If your wreath is um, um, is is looking sort of less than less than neat with the with sort of stems showing and things like that, is there anything that, that you would use to kind of cover all that up when you? design you need to clean it up a bit is there something yeah you can use as a... um, i actually don't have any i'm afraid but there's something called reindeer moss mm -hmm. it's like this kind of much fluffier it's actually what reindeers eat okay. and um and it's there's a very lovely natural pale color which i love kind of putting on top of all these bits and just kind of nestling it in okay um, you can buy it in all sorts of colors which is slightly terrifying but that's really good. Or just use normal pretty moss right. as well. I mean, this sphagnum one, it, you can get some really nice pieces, but a lot of it is a bit kind of murky and brown. Mm -hmm. um, or you could try the lawn moss again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but try and kind of position your bits so you don't have that problem. Yeah, yeah. So you're sort of covering up the stems with what comes next. Exactly, exactly. Um, so I'm keeping going. And this is a proper like forage one I'm, I'm doing here. <laughs> How's everyone doing? All okay. Mine is looking rather uh, eclectic. <laughs> Good. <we're ready. laughs> Can I use bay leaves? You can use whatever you like, honestly. Um, whatever, there's just no right or wrong. And I think it's, as I keep saying, it's such a personal thing. So what I think is beautiful, you might think is hideous. Um, so go with whatever takes your fancy. Yeah, it's nice to just pick things that you have in your garden, isn't it? I, mean, I have quite a small olive tree, so I've got, I can't use a lot of olive, but just a couple of... Couple exactly. Of so, yeah. Exactly. And I find it's just, I was talking the other day about it's that thing of, especially now more than ever, this kind of hour or however long you have just doing something with your hands and being kind of present. It's so good for us kind of emotionally, our kind of well being. Yes, absolutely. So I, I need to keep kind of filling on the inside now. You see, 
Mm -hmm. Um, garland is just an elongated wreath, I guess. Um, kind of, yes. You kind of, mm -hmm. to make a garland, you kind of want to make it like a long sausage, like a sausage of foliage. Um, it's actually, it's, it's a bit easier. Um, there are still rose hips and crab apples. Yes, there are so many at the moment. I mean, it's the best time. I've, I've never seen so many brilliant things to forage if you are lucky enough to kind of be in an area where you can, where you've got things on your doorstep. Maybe I might try some, I'm really obsessed with this dried fern. Um, I'm trying to attach all sorts of dried fruit, but the pins are a bit visible. Um, are you using mossing pins? Because you could use the wire, the real wire, which is a bit finer. Um, how long will the wreath last you're in France, Beverly? Um, it will very much depend on what you're using in your wreath. But a, a good couple of weeks, um, but it will also depend on how hot it is, how damp it is. It's so difficult to say. Mm -hmm. um, Willow, did you forage the fern? I foraged the fern today. <laughs> Quite a bit. Not very many of them. It, it, or mine feels a bit autumnal. I don't think I'm gonna. The bracken is quite. Let's see, she's quite wild. But actually, having the red berries with her, it kind of lifts it. Yeah. Um, loving the red. So, um, I, and the ribbon is a, is another um, a kind of a vital part. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, I love velvet, wins hands down every time. I've played a lot this year with kind of grow grain and satin ones and silk ones. And I just think velvet has the most kind of luxurious, festive, special feel. Um, there's a company called, Ber I'm going to pronounce it wrong, I'm sorry, um, Beresfords, um, which has stockists everywhere um i really recommend them but and i'd recommend using um the 50 mil so five centimeters wide and for really kind of luxurious bow you want kind of one and a half meters one to two meters um, and would you choose a color from um some, something that you put in the reef or would you sort of choose something contrasting how would you normally go about choosing a color for your ribbon? um God, uh, I'm kind of. I have this huge box of ribbons that I've collected from kind of various Christmas presents mm. over the years, and I save them all. And it's just a very kind of simple thing of holding them up and seeing what kind of makes me yeah. feel happiest. Um, I've got this lovely. This is a kind of pale grey silver velvet, which I've been working with quite a lot this year. And then this is green velvet really wide um yeah the width of the ribbon was this one's actually 63 millimeters um so she's really chunky and she they're wired if you can get a wired ribbon that is the dream um yes simon i did say 50 millimeters was this this velvet is 50 millimeters and this is 63 um but i would I, you could go down to 40 millimeters for it and it still look kind of chunky and lovely um so yeah and oh yeah so and what i do i don't know what color i'm going to do i think i'm going to do this i'll show you what i've been doing so i find it very hard to do a perfect bow and i did a wreath workshop the other day and people were spending like half an hour getting their knickers and dress because could it just didn't work and so what i've realized is that oh look how tangled we are um, I f I'm finding the best way, which I've never done before, is to get your ribbon in the middle. You can now get double-sided wow. velvet, which is extortionate, but it makes this so much easier. You get that from Vivi Rulo. Um, my copper re ring wire ring was, it's either 12 or 14 inches. I think it's 12. Um, so doing it this way so i'm taking two making two loops and i'm tying them that way like that and i 
it's kind of pretty instant and then you can kind of sort it out that way but I find the the normal way that I've done forever causes me more mm -hmm. trouble <laughs> so then I'm going to take a mossing pin again please do that again okay I'll show you this and then I'll do it again so I'm taking the mossing pin and I'm going to wire it just feed it through the back oh, I spiked it spike it through and then have it like that and then you can literally spike it straight into your wreath so you could be here for days <laughs> sorting them out so they're perfect so I quite like having them down the bottom yeah. and actually I find these kind of last um, bits so I, I want lots more in here but actually it's much easier doing it on your door in situ and then you can kind of stand back and, and see which is yeah. quite pretty how, how many wreaths will you, will you normally have in and around your house <laughs> at Christmas <laughs> <laughs> well I'm doing so many workshops at the moment that I each time I make one so I think I've I've had seven on my door since I started doing it um Christmas in July <laughs> I'm on my second garland um, so, um, you can jiggle them around get them under so that's that I rather love her that's beautiful and then you can kind of position things that if things are kind of dropping down, you kind of pull them out and prop them up again. Yeah. Yeah, like that bracket looks extraordinary. She might want to go up there. So yeah, how's yours looking? Quite different, but <laughs> at the moment. Oh, it's beautiful. And I need, I think I need, I need to add a bit more um, and find a find a ribbon. But yeah, I think I'm going to keep mine inside because it is. It feels a little bit like it won't stand up to the wind. <laughs> yeah, actually, someone's written twice. I'm sorry. Um, does it not blow over in the wind? It shouldn't if you secure things really tightly um, and use your pins well. And you do all the kind of the proper wiring in the beginning. It makes them a real kind of sturdy thing. Yes, it takes time, but. I guess that's the whole kind of point of it that they last. And I guess you can um, you can make repairs, couldn't you? If if, if yeah. you could just sort of take it off and you know add a bit of wire and just make it look make it look good. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. And one day you might come downstairs and be like, oh god, I don't like that. What what was I playing at yesterday? And you yeah. can just it's very easy just to lift them out and plonk them back in again. Yeah. Um, and I definitely encourage you to do that and just have a play. It's so all of this today. Apart from the Christmas tree and the base, obviously, and the ribbon, um, I foraged. And it was only like one handful of stuff, so you don't need a lot. And yeah, I've just seen, yeah, Pip saying, you now you've got the basics. You, the more you do, the easier it gets. Yeah. And you do it in your sleep. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it does. It feels like it's a real life skill that you've taught us, Winner. It's not like really great. You know, it's something that hopefully everyone will be able to sort of practice again and again. and you know, yeah, uh, let me, I'm being asked to show you the ribbon again. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to do it with another piece of ribbon. So this is, a, this is just a black normal ribbon. Okay, so fold it kind of in half. And then you're making a bunny's ear, I think someone's just called it. So you're making two loops like that. And then you're going to tie them. And you'll think it's not going to work. You tie it and then you kind of untwist and then you just kind of sort and keep pulling this so this is a grow grain ribbon and it's much harder to play with and it's she's a skinny little thing so the kind of chunky velvet ones are much easier to work with but that's how you do it really pretty. okay good bow tip good um so yeah that's how I, I hope you've all enjoyed that and I hope you can see. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's amazing that you've created that just in the space of the last kind of 45 minutes. That's really incredible. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Jess. Thank it's you. Beauty, but yeah, yeah. And so just going back to, because I think a couple of people may have missed at the beginning when you were talking about sourcing Christmas tree branches. So if you don't want to um, 
snippets of your tree when you get it. You can get them from the tree markets, you think, and people that, sell, that are selling them. Yeah, I would go and find this Christmas tree sellers everywhere, and they've always got off cuts. So I'd go there. I would try flowers from the farm again. I'm sure there'll be lots of supplies. I find that there's often there's lots around. I'm in Oxfordshire, and there's always by kind of sawmills. There's often Christmas tree growers there. Yeah. That might be very local to me. I don't know if that's a general thing. <laughs> um, maybe farmers. They might be happy to let you. Probably not actually. Um, but they are, yeah. they're becoming much easier to get. Yeah, yeah. I think it will all sort of, we'll start to see more Christmas tree markets from this weekend, won't you, where you might be able to go and... Yeah, exactly. Um, someone said, how much would the wreath last indoors? Um, this one would probably, I mean, bits of it would last for a long time because I've got lots of fir cones and stuff in here, but the green will probably dry out. Um, my kitchen is quite warm, so probably a week or so, mm -hmm. I think. Right. Um, yeah, you would work really well as a base as well. If you don't want to use Christmas tree, mm -hmm. you could use um, box, which I think is Buxus, mm -hmm. its proper name, um, or yew tree. Myrtle is another really good one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like um, lots of people have really enjoyed um, after oh. I'm seeing, I'm so glad. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, oh, pleasure. Oh, Lee, those are, these are my secretaires, and they're, I actually just saw that, but I'm getting more. They're on my website, but they're made by a company called Sakagen, and they're Japanese. They are life changing. <laughs> they're amazing. Yeah, do go on to Willow's website, willowcrossy.com, where there's lots of tools that you can buy and um, workshops that you, can, that you can find there for more floral styling. Um, so yeah, do do go and have a look. There's a lot there that, that will help you with your reading. So um, yeah, thank you so much, Willow. Thank you everyone for um, joining us this evening. I really hope everyone's enjoyed it.